Welcome to Active Christianity's Living the Gospel podcast. Join us as we talk about how we can live the gospel every day, no matter who we are, where we live, and what our circumstances are. Hello, podcast listeners, and welcome to another episode of Living the Gospel. I'm Kathy. And I'm Malenko. And in the studio with me today is a good friend of mine, Rolf. Uh, welcome to the studio, Rolf. Thank you. And, and uh, hi, everybody. He's done a lot of work with young people, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this session. Me too. So today we're continuing with our series about Philippians, and we're going to talk about two verses today. So, Malika, you want to read those verses? Yeah, the first one's Philippians 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That was the first one. And then we're also going to talk about Philippians 3, verses 12 to 14. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So maybe we can just start off, Rolf, by asking you, what what kind of is your initial thought when you think of those verses? Well, the fact that when we think of the good work that he has started in us, now Paul, he was talking to the Philippians and he was confident that God, not only in himself, but also in the Philippians, he was going to finish that good work that he had started. And what is then the good work? Well, when we read in Romans, we can see that uh, everyone is under sin. Paul says there, there is no one who seeks God. There is no one who does anything good. And then we have gotten a desire to do God's will. By nature, we don't have that desire. By nature, we are rather the opposite. And that is the good work that he has started in us. He has ignited something in our hearts that we want to serve God. Now, that is the good work, and he will complete it in everyone who believes. Wow. Yeah, that, I mean, that's really to think about that, that that's not who we are by nature, but when we feel that in us and we feel that longing for God, that's God himself who started something in us. Read Romans, uh, I think it's uh, chapter 3, yeah. if you're interested, to see where you are from, what your starting point is, and then see He has started a good work. He has ignited something in you. He has started that longing for eternity, started the longing to become good, which Mm. I am not. Mm. And it's just so encouraging because we know that when God starts something, he already sees the end and he knows already that it will succeed, right? Like he doesn't start a work and then think, well, we'll see how this goes. And the other thing is to think of that he started it in me, not when I was perfect, but he started it in me when I wasn't even looking for him, when I had no nothing in me at all that searched for him or had a, had a love for him. That's when he started this work in me. Yeah. And that's what I have to respond to, that yeah. he is working in me. Exactly, exactly. And uh, then we have to consider, Paul says that to the Corinthians, he says that consider your calling. Not many high, uh, high people, not many good people, not many, but that which was nothing God chose. And that you have a longing for God proves that he has started. And as uh, Kathy said, he is a master in finishing what he has started. Right. It only depends, am I on the same wavelength? Yeah. And the, and the thing is here, the, another thing you have to get from this verse is that it is a process so he started a good work and he will complete it. And in between, there's a lot happening. So if I, I have to be patient too. I have to, I have to learn to understand how God is working with me. Exactly. And not expect it all to be done in one day and then give up if it hasn't been. That's, no. uh, it's really important. Yeah, Rome wasn't built in one day and neither is your Christian life. It no. takes work. But it is God who's working. That's exactly <laughs> it. 
But that kind of leads me to my next question here. So it's written that he will complete the work in us, and it's him that works in us, right? But in that other verse that we read there in Philippians 3, it says, I press on, I press toward the goal, I lay hold of. So what is it that I am doing? We know God is working in us. What part is it that he is doing, and what is it that I am doing? Well, uh, my thoughts goes uh, right to Israel when they were led out of Egypt. God had promised them a land to be their own after 400 years of slavery in Egypt. And he had uh, appointed a a country that was going to be their own. And he had prepared everything for them. And and I, I want to read something in Deuteronomy. It's a fantastic verse that actually explains some of what we were talking about here. That I press on, I do this, and so on. Because um, in Deuteronomy chapter 33, there, and then it starts from verse 26. I'm going to read a few verses here. And then, then it says, There is none like the God of Jeshurun, who rides the heaven to your help, and through the skies in his majesty, the eternal God is a dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he drove out the enemy from you and said, destroy. There you see, even back then, when they were going to get this country that God had chosen, he had given it to them, but there were enemies in that country. So it is, he has started a good work in us, but in our flesh, there is resistance, and that is our enemy. Hmm. So in that promised land, we can say we're coming into a new life, we're coming into this, oh, I want to be like God, I want to be good, I want to be patient. I mean, I have a few kids, and uh, I thought before I was married that I could not be impatient with children, and I was used as a babysitter a lot just because of that ability. Then I got my own kids, and Mm. boy, did the world turn around. And I found myself being irritated. I found myself caught in a trap of doing what I hated to do in my own country, my own promised country, the way of salvation. Hmm. Now, is it something wrong with what God is doing? Or is it just what we read? He drove out the enemy. Suddenly I see irritation that I never seen before. And he tells me, here it is, destroy. And that, that, that's the point that we really need to begin to look at it with God's eyes too, that this is the enemy, that's God's enemy, and it's also my enemy then. And it dwells in me. It's in that promised land that's promised to me. There's the enemy. It's got no right to be there. So God's going to drive it out, and then he wants to use me to do that. Yeah. And so that, that's what becomes so fantastic when I see that. The Almighty God is driving out the enemy before me, yeah. and I have to. I have to be along in that battle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, sh- I shouldn't be surprised when I see it, right? Because it is there. The enemy is there. Exactly, and they knew that the enemy enemies were in the country. They sent out spies, twelve of them, one from each uh, tri- tribe, and only two mm-hmm. looked at it the same way as God did. They were not surprised when they saw the, the children of, uh, of Enoch. They knew them. They had seen them before. But their motto was, God has given the country to us. We will take them as if it was a piece of bread. Right. Mm. It didn't say that God was going to chase them away and destroy them. But he was pushing them out so you could see them f- out from their hiding places. They were driven out by God so that I could take them as a piece of bread. Mm. Right. Now, that's the eyes of faith. Mm. And then when he drives them out, he's also, he's he is giving you everything you need to then overcome them, right? He doesn't drive them out and then leave you to your own kind of resources or whatever to overcome them. No, he has, uh, as it says here, he rides the heaven to your help. 
And uh, in another verse in the in the Old Covenant, it says that the, the eyes of God goes to and fro to the whole earth to powerfully strengthen them whose heart is fully with him, with his power. So everything is there mm. for us. And we, we have to do with it. It says here, he's an eternal God who rides the heavens to help you. I mean, this is this is incredible when you read what's written there. It is. This, this, it this is. is the God, and it this was the old covenant. That in, how much more in the new covenant, yeah. where this work that He sent His own Son to do is now being completed in us. Yeah. In me personally. Yeah. yeah. Isn't He going to ride the heavens to to help me? Oh, to yeah. to thrust out the enemies, stay destroy, and that's the strength He gives me through the Holy Spirit, exactly. and I can now go and do that. And and by faith now. The Bible is a fairly thick book with a lot of verses, but and it's hard to understand it all. But take one verse, bind it to your heart, bind it to your mind, use it as a weapon. For example, 1 Corinthians uh, 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common for men. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted. Listen to what Paul says here. He will not let you be tempted. So every enemy he drives out in front of you, every temptation that comes up from around next corner, boom, there it was. Now, no temptation will ever from this day right into eternity, be stronger than what I am by faith in God's Word. Hmm. And then he says, uh, with the temptation, he provides a way of escape. Exactly. And what's the way of escape? It is to come to that divine nature, to come to that oh, victory over sin, right. destroying my enemy. <laughs> so he gives, he gives us the opportunity that we can come to that exactly. with every temptation. And that means that I have to overcome. It is a battle, and that's the work he started in me, but it will succeed. It's exactly. guaranteed. It. Hey, he, could have, he could have gone ahead of Israel in the old times. He could have chased out every enemy of that country. And, and you should almost say like you would have come to a set table, no problems, no temptations, no nothing. But where is the glory then? What uh, what is the glory when you come to that? Hmm. I don't see any glory. No, in it. there isn't. No, the the value the value lies in it that I've given something that yeah. I have also shown that I am want I want to do this. I want to lay hold of that which God has promised to me, and then I'm obedient to Him. Yeah, exactly. And obedience is like uh, Kathy said. I should not be surprised when I see the enemies. Because that is God who has now uh, been riding heavens to help me to drive them out so I can see them. So I shouldn't be su surprised that they are there, but rather, oh yes, here is an opportunity for me to actually come. I want it to be good. How am I going to be good if I don't see that which is evil mm. and can do something about it? Yeah. And then we get to that next part, what Paul writes about that. He says, I, I haven't yet attained it, but I forget what's behind and I reach out for that which is ahead, that I can lay hold of that which Christ has laid hold for me of me. And, uh, and th that, that's the thing that, that I, can, I can also, like you said, you think you've, you've come to a certain uh, stage where I'm, I'm pretty good now, right? I haven't, I haven't got any more impatience or I, I'm not impatient by nature. And then you come into a situation where you actually see that enemy suddenly pops up, right? Mm. And then, then you see, I haven't yet got to that point where I am perfect. I, I still have something to do. But I'm forget, I forget what's behind. Forget all that, you know, what I thought was good and all the things that also all the, the defeats and so on. Now I've got this enemy ahead of me and now I have to reach ahead for what God has promised me. Yeah, and it's uh, th those verses are uh, in Philippians uh, 3. I mean, they are fantastic. You should read the whole chapter, but we, we don't do that now. But uh, we, we can read it uh, from verse uh, 13. I read them again. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, 
Then you have to ask yourself now and then, how many things are you occupied with? Paul was only mm. occupied by this one thing, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward a goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He had seen what he could attain. If you read further a little bit ahead of, of, of these verses, you could see that he was so gripped of Jesus Christ and what this new life could Give him. Mm. And then it says, Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also. In other words, he's talking about, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I have not yet attained to perfection. But he was perfect in this mindset. One thing I do. Mm. I press on to that which I have not yet attained. Right then you're not surprised by the enemies that you see. Mm. But that is my opportunity to take yet another step, to reach even further into that which I am so gripped of. Yeah. And that means that whatever comes up, I have that one goal. It yeah. makes it very, very specific what I'm doing, very goal-oriented, and it, means, it makes it very clear. So no matter what I meet in life, and if it's unexpected enemies or whatever it is, I have that one goal and I know what I have to do. Yeah. And it's actually God's grace over me that I see that, right? Yes. Like I, I'm I'm reaching forwards toward towards perfection and I have to take those steps then towards perfection. So it's his exactly. grace that he shows me those things so that I yeah. can make progress. Because we start to see progress then. It's not just hmm. that like it's gonna like I mean, we're gonna have a battle always, but we start to see progress. And we start to see that something happens, right? And something changes. Yeah. And th that's uh, that's also what's amazing here. It's uh, like when I just read those verses again, it, it's a really, really high calling we have and a really high confession that we are going to come to resurrection mm. from the dead. Mm. And it says here that uh, I press toward the goal for the prize. I read in another translation when I was doing a bit of research here, it says, I press toward the goal for the supreme prize. So there is no greater prize mm -hmm. for the of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And that call of God, that's what we were speaking about right at the start, that God wakens something in me. That's mm -hmm. that calling to that supreme prize, which is that I can be together with Jesus, inherit all things together with Him, and be like Him, mm -hmm. that I can actually attained to that nature that is in him. And where does that happen? It happens in these daily situations. We're exactly. talking about this irritation. And you, in the middle of the irritation, you don't feel there's any supreme prize. What you feel is irritation, exactly. right? And then you get, uh, you, and it can look completely the opposite. If I've got that one goal, then I'm reaching for that. Exactly. And that means now I have something to fight for and against. That, that irritation is what is between me in this situation, between me and that upright call. Right. Get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of it. Destroy it. <laughs> it's very, it's very uh, direct what I'm doing then. Exactly. Yeah. Then you live a very conscious life of your heavenly calling and the work that God has started in right. us. Right. Then you can be sure, as sure as Paul was with the, uh, with the Philippians, that he who has started this work, he will complete mm. it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's why we can agree with what James writes, that we can count yeah. it all joy. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, that, what, what you say when, when, when James comes up with that, uh, count it all joy when you're into various temptations. Um, you cannot manage to do that unless you have that heavenly goal, the vision before you that Paul was not uh, disobedient to. But in that mindset that this is between me and that upright call, in that mindset, then I can count it all joy that I see what is hindering me from my goal. So, mm. so Peter, he says too, that we should arm ourselves with the mind that he who has suffered in the flesh, he has ceased from sin. So when I meet my enemy, irritation, it becomes a suffering. I suffer in the flesh. 
and I cease from sin. Hmm. So it takes more and more before I get tempted. In other words, I've partaken more and more of God's nature who cannot be tempted by anything. Hmm. What a goal. What a goal. And it's it's not something we have to do in our own strength. We have God on our side. And it, it's it's the thing is that we all come into temptations. Young people, they, they have all kinds of temptations in their daily life. I think we sometimes have to just collect our thoughts, sit down and really think about this. What is my calling? And then read about it. Go down and read God's mm. word. What is my calling? Mm. Right now in this situation, I meet myself. I meet what's in my nature. You mentioned impatience and there's that irritation. Uh, Paul speaks about youthful lusts, which can be very many things. What, what, all that there, that is the enemy. Mm. Mm. And uh, now we've got God who's saying destroy. Mm. And uh, uh, he's given us the tools to do it. And we have to go and do that. We have to suffer in the flesh. Yeah. I mean, we'll feel that when that impatience comes up and I have to, I have to deny that. That's a suffering. Mm, mm. But that that is where the battle lies. Exactly. And that's the work that God's doing in me, that yeah. I want to do that now. And if you want to have uh, Scripture from the New Testament to prove what the Deuteronomy said, look at what Paul writes to Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. For God who said, light shall shine out of the darkness. This was long before there was any electricians. There was no cable laid anywhere, and he created light by saying, let there be light, and there was. Hmm. Then it says, he is the one who has shone in our hearts. In another translation, it says, who have let that light shine into our hearts. In other words, he drives the enemies out in front of us, and now he says, destroy. As he says further on here, always caring about in our flesh the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that the life of Jesus also should be manifested in our mortal bodies. That's incredible. As human beings, we believe that that shall happen over there. Yes, hallelujah, we are over in heaven and everything is fixed by God himself. But Then he repeats what he just said, that the life of Jesus Christ should be manifested in our mortal bodies. In other words, while we're here and we are beings that are going to die sooner or later. Hmm. And before that point, the life of Jesus Christ should shine forth from us. And when does that happen, (laughs) Ralph? It's right there when I'm feeling a temptation to be impatient, which means I feel impatient. Right there, the life of Christ is going to come out of my body. How? By destroying. Destroy. <laughs> destroying impatience. And don't yeah. forget, it is God who in his mercy has let that shine into our darkness. Hmm. Because we only see impatient. But if we do not have as Paul, I press onward to that goal of perfection. I see the imperfection. But now I can do something about it. Right. And I've proven through reading these verses that God hasn't changed his mind from the old covenant to the new covenant. He will still help you shine light into your darkness. In other words, drive out the enemy in front of me. Hmm. And then he says, destroy. Right. By how? Caring about in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And that's the thing that that light shows me my enemies. It it it, show, it shines in a dark place, and there's there's the enemies there. I didn't see them, no, but exactly. now I see them. Yeah. And now I can do something about it. And then that light becomes the light of the life of Christ. Exactly, that's, that's radiating from me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's transformation. And that's the work that God is doing in me. He started it. I have to believe that. And if uh, I haven't seen it that way before, just the fear, the longing that, you know, that I feel that for God, that's God working in me. He started the work and Mm -hmm. now I have to be along in that and he'll complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So Jesus will come back and then he'll fetch all of those that this work has taken place in. Finally, flesh of my flesh and bones of my bones. He'll be... The same (laughs) qualities, the same life in our mortal 
bodies. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Yeah. laughs> it's unbelievable. So I think like we can ask ourselves, like, do we really believe this? You know, and uh, do I really believe that this work will be completed in me? And I think that like this has been so incredibly encouraging. Can't believe I get to start my morning with this. <laughs> with this kind of encouragement <laughs> but i think like it's to we should encourage our listeners here to commit these verses to memory and believe in them when you're tempted right, right. like that's in that when moment. you need to believe yeah yeah so, so we we got some really fantastic verses here. Those ones in Philippians, and we've also got those from deuteronomy 33 go back and read that yeah. about the god you know who rides the heavens for us yeah take it to yourself, this is literally the truth. Yeah, and, and then we've got this from Second Corinthians four, uh, where we really can, the same God that was in Deuteronomy, the same God we have today, shining yeah. that light. And and uh, and if you read from uh, read the whole chapter four, but when you come towards the end of it, then you see what Paul puts into uh, to puts into the equation. While we do not look at that things which is present, but at the things which is eternal. Right. Then our tribulations is but short and light. Right. And there it is again. One thing I do. Yeah. Yeah. Look ahead, yeah. press ahead, and anything that's between me and that goal, that has to be destroyed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you are allowed to look behind, be quiet. And see what God has done yeah. for you. Yeah. If you compare yourself today and you see all the enemies, look behind you in a year's time when you have been faithful in destroying and see how much advance you have made on right. this way. Right. You are allowed to do that. Yeah in order to boost your confidence in God and your good self-esteem that yeah. God is actually doing a work in yeah. me. And, the, and the, the thing is that, that all that, that is God's glory. God has done a work in me. I, I was the one who didn't seek Him at all. I had no nothing in me that was good at all. And now I see that there has been progress. Exactly. And it's God who has done that in me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Be still. And see the wonders, yeah. because it is a miracle. When I look behind, like I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit grayish. I, uh, uh, I, I'm turning sixty this year, and looking behind me, seeing what actually has taken place in my life because I have chosen to believe. It says about the it says about the Israel, who did he swore that they were not going to come into his rest, or they were not going to come into the country that he had given them? Was it not? But those who said, "I do not want to believe," it says in one translation, it was because of unbelief. Hmm. And when I see back where I have had faith, which is becoming my everyday life, I must say. When I see what faith has brought me and compared to the times where I was, ah, I don't think it will succeed for me, see the difference, I must say, be still and see the wonders and miracles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rolf, for coming in. I think that was incredibly encouraging. So thanks very much. And maybe we'll have to have you back again sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, if I can strengthen young people in achieving our common goal to be partakers of Jesus Christ, I'm ready anytime. Awesome. Yes, <laughs> we're right with you there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we actually have an email address now. So if you have any questions about anything you heard or... If you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach us at livingthegospel at bcc.no, and we'll put that in our episode description for today as well, so you can find it there. So thank you for joining us again, and I truly hope this has been as encouraging and helpful for you as it has been for me. Yep. Thanks, everyone, and uh, join in next week again. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.